Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. If you listen closely, you might be able to hear the sprain peepers outside. Probably not. I bet it'll get picked up as background noise and it'll be, it'll be filtered out. out. But we can hear them. It's Anyhow, Ar Artie and Marty are back for more Recipe for Turnabout. We're on the last trial today. Starting oh. fiends oh, out. Yeah, we are. That yeah. would make the most sense. That's the nice fiend. After game, the first game, there's never more than free uh -huh. trial periods in one case. It's nice. It is nice. The pacing for these cases are better. Anyhow, let's get started. Let's get crazy. <laughs> January 8th, 9.46 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Nagy. So, what did you think... What do you think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't see... Didn't go so well, and then it ended on a giant mystery. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh... Yeah, of course. I saw that! That little flash of doubt in your eyes! No, no! That wasn't doubt. That was, um, determination. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You'd better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger that. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. I'm just disappointed that in this uh, game we never see Maggie do her salute animation. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, that would be better. Hey, pal! Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out! She doesn't need that! H how did you know she was stressed? Uh, I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this'll help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me that you don't remember this, Fane. Hmm. Come to think of it, that doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. This is the small bottle that turned up in Trabion's kitchen a couple of days ago. Whoa! Look at all these little bottles! Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And it doesn't smell. Yeah, you know, back when Maya had a job. Yeah, for like two seconds. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's medication. Medication? Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears? You mean... Yeah, it's the medication Glenn Elk was using for his ruptured eardrum. It looks like nail polish. <laughs> I'll be honest. What was Glenn Elg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Small bottle refiled into the court record. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Great job. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... Hmm, that's going to weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today, got it? Okay. Today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done, or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. January 8th, 10 a.m., sharp. District Court, courtroom number four. Oh, hey, Godot. What, did you think it was like, I oh, always, Godot got sick. No, Winston I always Payne is here instead. that Godot exists until we start a video, and I'm like, oh, yeah, Coffee Boy. <laughs> is he your least favorite of the main prosecutors? No. So, Edgeworth, no. Francisca, and Godot, is he your least favorite? Oh, maybe. But That's he's, he's interesting. I, I think the main thing is it's like Edgeworth is like the tried and true, like, oh yeah. Like, everybody loves Edgeworth. Like, it's Francis, true. He has, he has like, a very sizable female fan yeah. base. <laughs> <laughs> and male, probably. Um, and then there's, like, Francisco, who I personally liked and probably no one likes. And then Godot's cool. But, but like, he can't stand he's up better to better than Winston Payne. Is he better than Manfred von Karma? Yes. <laughs> Although Man from Von Karma, once we had the spa day, like, well, that, okay, I was like, yeah, that this is way better. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Wow, he never opens. 
Very good. Then we'll get underway he at once. He always just is like... <laughs> it just stares at him. <laughs> Yesterday we heard the terrible testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. Oh, yeah. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left oh, hand. Oh, yeah, we had that whole thing. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Ha. Allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor, with the tune of my amazing theme song. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I recorded it in a coffee shop. Can you tell? It, this totally would play at, like, a jazz club. Yeah. In, like, the or, of like... If like, in playing... one of those old detective movies, black and white. Sure, one <laughs> of those. Or if you're playing, like, I don't know, a dating simulator game that's like, Oh! It's the hot guy! And he's like, dude, and he's, like, sparkling everywhere, and his hair is, like, I beautiful. am sure there's a Phoenix Wright dating simulator oh, fan there are game with, with this music be. played for Godot. There 100% must be. <laughs> The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Godot. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. I just wish we could see his face. <laughs> Only losers think like that. <laughs> my mask is perfectly <laughs> cool, and you don't need to see my face. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm with Godot. I don't want to show my face on the internet. I mean, I... yeah... And it's not because I'm Quasimodo. No, <laughs> it's because no, I value you're not. my privacy. Sure. That's, you, that's the one nice thing about the internet. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers. Oh, you know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here, he was throwing us off the scent. Okay. Whatever. He was your witness, Kado. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. Cool. Oh. Hi. Why? You and said why, I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> it shows our different opinions of this Hi. Movie. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> and you are... Oh, bonjour, everybody. Actually, you can do the voice. Oh, bonjour, everyone. I haven't done this in forever, so now I gotta remember this I am John Armstrong, the owner of this head chef of the Travion restaurant. Enchanté. 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 <laughs> Please stop sticking your butt out. It makes me uncomfortable. Forgive me for asking, witness, but are you a woman? <laughs> Ooh la la, monsieur, as you can see, I am zippered and perky. And <laughs> And here's we're gonna the, have another video of Marty problem. just laughing the whole time. Every time of like... <laughs> laughing yeah, yeah, yeah. hysterically. Because it's funny. It's hilarious. I don't think no, okay. no. The way he talks and then the way I'm trying to talk, it makes me laugh every time uh, I okay. to speak. Uh, um, on the day of the incident, you were in Trabion's kitchen. Isn't that right? With you, uh, with you, monster? With you, monsieur. Oh, monsieur. I was like, monster. This is why I don't. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Everything feels right. He's like, He's oh like, yeah, no, this is no. how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> ha. Wow. He's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Probably Edgeworth. Very well. Your testimony, please, witness. Please tell the court what happened that day at Trabio. Oh, boy. We? Vo volunteers? I <laughs> Volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> I, I need volunteers at my restaurant because I can't afford I to I mean, pay that's anybody. what it looks like it says. <laughs> if you ever get, like... You're like, I can't do this anymore. I'll take over. No, I, I will help <laughs> I feel you. bad that you don't have, like, anybody to devoice uh, during this, so. Maybe she'll appear. Uh, she already has appeared. No, oh, wait, no, the ooh, other. Yeah. Oh, I now know. Okay, the, the weird girl that's Viola. like. Yeah, Viola. She's like the female version of No Face from Spirit Away. Uh uh, where he's like sticking his yeah, hand out. What a the... disgrace to Viola. She's way cuter than She's that. She's cuter, but like, I'm saying like the weird, like, tone of voice, like, uh. She doesn't have voice talent! Well, the way that I'm making her voice, at least. Anyway, <laughs> what's up? At the Trabian! When it all happens, there were just two customers in my restaurant. 
I remember I was experimenting with the new art deco that day. Like, oh, ha like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. I was like, wait, <laughs> ah? Wait, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. La cup, la earpiece, and la glasses. He would have seen everything in reverse, not- That's what I said! <laughs> that I was is. like, it must be the mirror thing. A uh, m-, m mirror We oui, ou le grand leap mirror. The most enormous mirror. <laughs> I have to, like, make sure I read the whole sentence before saying it, because otherwise I'm like, the volunteers. <laughs> volunteers! <laughs> and suddenly, the mystery disappears. That's literally what I said. I can't believe nobody brought it up till now. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm. That would explain the coffee cup and the earpoint piece conundrum. <sighs> the mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. <laughs> Phoenix is like, this is total bullcrap. Yeah. <laughs> now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. <laughs> At the Trabian. <laughs> all right. So, when it all happened, there were two customers. There was just the two customers. <laughs> and who were the two customers, exactly? Me. Mice? Me. Me. Me, of course, the young man who died. And the other not-so-young man. Hmm, you're referring to yesterday's witness, I presume? Should've taken French. What about the other man Maggie says she saw at the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? I guess I'll just have to try a different <sighs> approach for the time being. I remember when I was experimenting I with the new, new art, art deco. deco. <laughs> Not decorations, deco. You were experimenting with art deco? How come I never heard about that before today? You are not familiar with the language of interior design, monsieur. Please stay on topic. Now, why didn't you tell the court about this before? But I did just a few moments ago. Ahem. Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned, are you referring to some sort of deco chore? No, no, art deco. It's a style of design, your honor. He's talking about interior design. Walls, ceilings, carpets, that kind of thing. Oh yes, of course. That deco. I was trying to achieve a more la effeminite look for effeminate. my... For my restaurant, I don't care. I think, I think having a butcher. bad French accent makes him better. Effeminate is a English word. Oh, I think wait. having a bad accent for every word makes him sound better because it makes him It seem works fake. for him, yeah. <laughs> I had the large mirror between the tables. How big of a mirror are we talking about here? It's like when Lada had the worst accent that she kept, like, spitting because I couldn't do a southern accent. Hey, like, <laughs> no! <laughs> not, like, not like Daffy Duck. I mean, hey, guys, I'm just testing out my camera here. Oh, Fuck man. Steven. Boof? Boof? Boof or boff? I don't know. Something about four meters wide and a wee about two meters high. Let's see, if one meter is about a yard... Holy glass in a frame, Batman! That's huge! I was intending to install on the ceiling eventually. Why do you want a mirror on the ceiling? Wait, okay, so hang on. Is it, like, flat on the ceiling so you look up and you can see yourself? Or is it, like, horizontal but, like, hanging Angled, from the ceiling? so it's, like, weird. Ugh, I don't know. I mean, I've heard of places that have mirrors on the ceiling. I'm just like, why? Like, is it gonna be like the staircases at Koopa Bros Fortress? Like, where it's like on the chains, like... Is it? Is it like that, or is it like flat on top of the ceiling? I think it's ceiling, flat, parallel like, the, to the ceiling. ceiling is the mirror. Okay. It's more I couldn't tell if it was that, or if it was like, it's like a normal mirror that, you, mirror that you'd hang on the wall, but like, draping from the ceiling. No, that like. would be a hazard. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't give two rips about yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> there was a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. Mine on, but I decided not to go with it in the end. What should I do? Should I ask him more about the mirror or not? Yes! Always ask for more! <laughs> when in doubt! <laughs> I mean, yeah, but sometimes you get penalized. Except if you're if you're um doing something Only with if, Mo. you're cross if you're cross-examining Mo. If you're cross-examining Mo and he's like, Oh, oh man, I was pooped! Yeah, you well. don't want to press this one! <laughs> yeah. Hold! You were pooped! 
to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, but otherwise, always ask, basically. He couldn't lie about such a huge object like that. It must have been there in the restaurant somewhere. Hmm. So the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. That's it? No. Oh, we, we didn't say press harder. Yeah. Okay. If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Bird's testimonies. Yeah. B but But. You didn't ask, Trite. You have only yourself to blame for such a sloppy work. We didn't know till just now! <laughs> what?! A mirror was delivered to Trabi on the day before the incident. Okay. R really As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. And as it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. Here's the thing. Because we weren't at the last trial, there's probably a bunch of things where it's like, well, everybody remembered that this person also touched the poison. Like, <laughs> that they would not tell Zinio right didn't do any, like, meaningful cross-examinations, let's no. be honest. No, he didn't. This just doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to Trabian, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Ha. If you want to doubt someone, Trite, look in the mirror. I'm sure the person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Wow. Hmm. So the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. Mm -hmm. Indeed. We oui, perhaps that is what the old, old man, man was looking, looking at. at. <laughs> Normally, I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Normally, how does normality come into this? That's lame, trite. Even for you. Wow. Huh? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible? Is that it? No. This game is living proof that normal stuff does, like, <laughs> does not happen. Did you, do you not remember the circus case? Oh yeah, this guy, this monkey happened to carry a bust of the defendant he into the guy. Life. He happened to drop it down. And, like, the guy happened to be wearing the remaster's coat. And the remaster's coat happened to get He's snuck so on high. it. I saw the Max fly away. Exactly. <laughs> Where does that leave the porky headed lawyer and the top knot chick over there? Besides, it's not like everybody's. And the normal. ungodly cool guy with the mask over here. Well, trite. Back! Not the hair! I do not have a top knot! Yeah, you do. <laughs> Mr. Godot is correct. She doesn't have a knot in her hair. She has like the bun on top. Yeah, but it's not a knot, it's a bun. That's very different. A knot? No. He has a speckled belly and doesn't have <laughs> cybercots kung fu fins. No, but I'm saying it's really different from that. If you have a knot in your hair, it's like, good luck. You can't mix country and western. They're, They're like two completely, completely different things. <laughs> a lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Leon, <laughs> logic has won the day. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, this, this, the earpiece and the glasses. Uh, this face, <laughs> man. This face. It creeps me out a little bit. It's like the eyes. It's glittering. Yeah. Everything? He would have seen everything in reverse. We. Hey, Nick. We should take a second think about what old CD said in his testimony. How did he phrase it again? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. And he used the same hand to pick up the cup. His left hand! If he saw everything he described reflected in the mirror, then everything he said he saw on the left was actually on the right, huh? And that clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess. Or does it? No, because didn't he move with the opposite hand of the earpiece? Huh? Didn't he move with no. the opposite hand? His So his uh, HMD, his earpiece, and his hand were all on the left side. The, like, his left hand used right. to use, uh, pick up the so cup. According for, to Victor so, But Kudo. for his testimony, he said he would pick it up with the same hand as the side. And if that's on the left, it should be on the right. Right. So basically, he Victor Kudo said he saw it on the left, and Armstrong is saying, well, he saw it in the mirror, so all of that would be on the right, which clears up the contradiction. So that means the earpiece would be in his right ear, which he could hear out of, and he picked it up with the cup up actually with his right hand, which means that it actually would match up with the lip prints. Do we have his earpiece as evidence? Uh, no, but we no. have his profile. Oh, his earpiece? No. Specifically? No, because I wanted to see if there were, like, traces of ear cream on it. 
Do, no, we don't have that. Okay. Ha! It's kind of hard to believe everything's the fault of a mirror, but... Do you think old CD saw everything through a reflection? If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. But that just makes the situation worse for Maggie! There's gotta be something in that old man's testimony. We just gotta dig deeper. You gotta dig a little deeper. How did I know you were gonna start singing that song? Because, well, because I only... That is one of those songs from Princess and the Frog that I literally never remembered. I only remember that part. I don't remember anything else. I don't. I, even, a, I, I could not even tell you what half the movie was. In the, um, honestly, I've only seen uh, it once. So she she gets up and she's exhausted, and then she works oh. in her job, and then okay, she I goes back home and she's exhausted. Then she works in another job. You're describing and... me working at Wendy's. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> no, no. Then like this big old fat rich guy comes in and he's like oh give me some beignets and then she gives him Boy, beignets and then, i don't remember that you don't remember him it's played by the same guy who's solely john in, goodman you in mean? john goodman and then um this like very southern gal with blonde hair comes in she's I like her. Ah! oh my stars ah! harry potter <laughs> yeah oh my stars harry potter yeah and she's like we're gonna have a ball and there's gonna be a prince and you gotta come and you gotta make all these beignets and pay and then, like, she'll get enough money for a restaurant. So she bakes the beignets, and then she brings them, and then she dresses up for the party, and it's kind of like the beginning of Wicked a little bit, where she's like, oh my god, like, where Glinda's like, I need to go on this thing with, um, the Fiero? Where he's like, I'll pick you up at around eight? Yeah, that's or whatever, it's like that. <laughs> we are extremely off topic Sorry, from but the it's game. like that. And then, um, she, the, the prince comes in, but it's not the prince, it's like... That voodoo guy, Doctor Facilier. I don't know his name at all. And then uh, Shadow Man. And I don't know. And then at some point she turns into a frog, and then she finds the real prince. <laughs> I think you have a lot of this frog. out of order. And then the, the kiss, and boom, prince, princess, mate. It, it, it wasn't a very good movie. No offense to Disney. I wish they'd go back to 2D animation, but it was just too weird. Oh, when it all happened, there were two no, customers in the restaurant. The restaurant I, I was experimenting oh, to art oh, deco. We have to we have to prove it now. Shoot, yeah. I wasn't thinking about that. We have a that. large mirror between the, the tables. Uh, perhaps that is what he was looking at. Everything would be in reverse. It would probably but... be. That would be the one we would be pressing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Waluigi with the rose in his mouth. When his mouth is open, he reminds me of a hamster. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> now I can never unsee that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Okay, alright. So let's go for it. Let's go for it. Paint your avatar. Oh, <laughs> well, no, there's more. <laughs> uh, okay, attorney's badge, Magatama, the sports paper, the magazine clipping, the old man's job listings. This is a lunch special. <laughs> a scooter, <laughs> and not the Muppet. Uh, Jean's loan contract. I just realized, um. Shoot, what was I gonna say? This guy is basically the equivalent of, like, the Ratatouille feed. Anyone could cook it. Yeah, anyone can. That doesn't mean everyone <laughs> should. Uh, Victor's testimony. When I, the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Try beyond floor maps. That doesn't help me. Okay. Uh, Glenn's autopsy. No. Died of potassium cyanide poisoning. That doesn't help. Crime photo. Slumped over. Yep. Done. Uh, the coffee cup. Coffee contained potassium cyanide covered mm. in the victim and Maggie's fingerprints. Mm -hmm. The victim's lottery ticket found on a body search of Maggie. Apron worn by Maggie at the time okay. of the incident. Small pockets, but big stains. Potassium cyanide uh, bears Maggie's fingerprints found in her apron yep, pocket. Yeah, yeah. Prescription bag. He got okay. it before going to Trabion. A bag is empty because the other thing was in was, it. Was in it, and then it came out. Okay, so. Yes. Glenn's calendar. Meet with the tiger. Right. Paper badge. Right. MC Bomber. Okay. The Millionaire Flyer. Nah. Uh, Gumshoe's no. Lunchbox. That's gonna be key evidence, I'm sure. Viola's Medical Papers. No. The Trabion Matches. The Small Bottle. I, okay, um, everything would have been in reverse. Oh, wait, hang on. Glenn might have his ear... No, he doesn't have his earpiece in there. Darn it. They did that on purpose. Wore an HMD over the left eye. Left eardrum was ruptured. I still really hope that he's, like, wearing it over his left ear and he's just like, I won the lottery! 
<laughs> like, he's just like hopped up on painkillers or yeah, something. Yeah, <laughs> like that's what I still think would be. Damn, I want a lottery. Um. <laughs> Dang, that guy's creepy looking. Oh, I forgot about Robot Lisa lady. Basil. Lisa Basil. <laughs> Oh, I thought she was, like, my age. She's a few years older. She's a few years older than you. She's just, like, freakishly tiny. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried she, about her. She, okay. Um. Our friend's mom, who really likes tea. I'm trying to think of how to describe this person without saying their name. Likes tea Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Kind of look, it reminds me a bit of that. If If she was dressed up to be thoroughly creepy. Like, she's kind of similar sizing. A little bit. The friend we know isn't, like, anorexic, though. No, but... Uh, okay, but I'm saying... I if, know. It, Petite. 20, if she was, like, 20. Maybe. 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 There, there are people like that. Anyway, I can't figure out what the heck we're doing here. Okay, probably because you get distracted. Right? Yeah, like, I get distracted. You're like, oh, let me recite Princess and the Frog. <laughs> Frog the plot. 50 words or less. <laughs> Except that was definitely more than 50 words. <laughs> I just like your summary of Tiana. Yo, I I cook! cook. <laughs> That was from a while ago. I was trying to describe all the Disney princesses. And she's I like, like I, I, I literally don't remember, like, Tiana at all, except I know she's, like, hardworking, loves, loves to cook. people, and loves to cook. Yep, that's Tiana. I was like, Tiana. I like to cook! Yep, that's Kronk. I made all gumbo! Alright, all right, well, if you don't know what it is... Is then... it just, like, showing a picture of him? Is it because... Is it because of what I thought, but I didn't say it right? Maybe. The coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Yeah. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? <sighs> okay. The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens sure. of his specs. so left, left. No question! You can lock me up if I'm wrong! It was his left ear, without a doubt! Okay. So, to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw all of that as a reflection in a mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exact, exact event, you see, Monsieur. Now that you think about it, it's not so hard, no. Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Yes, yeah, so that was kind of what I was thinking, but I didn't know how to prove that. Right. Order, order! Mr. Wright is correct. If the witness genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, then we would expect the victim's eyepiece to have been over on his right eye. Objection! <laughs> Mr. Wright's wrong! How bitter. Trite, you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. She splashes it. Uh, are we talking about your coffee, or something completely different? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks. You remember this, I presume? Yeah. The I broke the vase, sorry, apology let, I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony. Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit, other than throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elg? Clearly it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elg's HMD made a big impression on the old man. What? I saw the earpiece and those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes! They were both on his left ear. Do you hear? His left ear! Great impression, Gado. Ha. Well, Trite. Ugh. That's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow! I really thought he was old CD for a minute there. Godot's good. I was I, I debated trying to do it, like me doing Godot's voice, voice trying to do Godot's <laughs> voice, but that would be too complicated. It'd it's it's like Helen Bonham Carter playing Hermione playing herself. <laughs> I forgot about that! Yeah, where they're like, uh, like trying to figure Enough. out Enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash from in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like you're the boil of a contradiction you found was just a rash. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. 
Or we're all right ears. We, oui, I can explain, please, if you will look at the plans of the restaurant. The mirror. Ooh. Alone, is everyone sitting comfortably? What is this, Bob Ross, the joy of painting? It's everybody sitting comfortably. So everyone's sitting comfortably. La mirror, it was the set middle. That was what I was going to mention next. I was like, maybe it's the middle of the restaurant and there's like a weird hallway between. <laughs> this is a great. La mirror, it was the middle of the restaurant dividing the two halves. Okay. There's only one seat from which you could have seen an image of the victim. Well, that already is bogus because <laughs> we had the whole, like, camera picture, uh, thing. Of him dying. Where they were like, this is the view from the, where he was sitting, I thought. Yeah, they're saying Elg is there, and that's exactly where he is in the photo. No, but what I'm saying is, if you were to take a picture of the mirror, it wouldn't look right. It would be the wrong seat still. Anyway. Oh, wait, are you saying the mirror should have shown up in the camera? Yeah. Mirror should have shown up in the camera. Also, um, it wouldn't work if you were taking a picture from there to bounce. It would still bounce. It's not, okay, they didn't take the picture of the mirror and the reflection. They took the picture, like, there. Which would have been too mirror. quick. Or, 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 or not too quick, too, um, close. We might figure more about anyway. that. The testimony's not done yet. Anyway. Oh, uh, well, I didn't get to read it. I thought you already read it. No. Okay. The mirror was right in the middle. That is where the old man was sitting. Okay. <laughs> After the terrible incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. Okay, so that explains it. So the mirror he moved before the police were arrived to take the picture. You're not allowed to do that. This is <laughs> I, am, I am completely exempt from any sort of like. Uh, That's like time. the one <laughs> thing you can't do is like. Oh, there are a lot of mess things you up can't the, do, Okay, but. but there's a lot of things where it's like, don't mess with the evidence, don't move anything, even like a chair, <laughs> like from everything he's like, Well, I'll just, what's I'll you gonna do? Move this entire mirror. <laughs> wow. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Oh, really? Oh, because I'm so Because we found glad. a bottle in the kitchen of someone's ear medicine that definitely... He wouldn't have just been like, well, I put my ear medicine in, guess I'll go chuck it in the kitchen... Like, that's, not <laughs> that's not gonna happen. So we already found that. Uh, question: Do you want to record just until we get to the uh, end of the chef's as a witness, or do you want to like stop now and take a break? I'll take a break now. Okay. Hmm. I see no problems with the explanation we've just heard. Yeah, but when we get to the cross examination, from the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little qu uh, cookie. Cookie. <laughs> croissant. <laughs> I was gonna say croissant. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> what a naughty little croissant I am. <laughs> You've seen all the men like this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. He's like, I'd like a croissant with my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. Ah! I hate that guy. You said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volunteers, of course! <laughs> <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, if you please. Volunteers? Volunteers! <laughs> <laughs> that could be the title sure. of the video. And that's where we're going to leave the episode for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. We got through one testimony. Is that it? Oh, one. <laughs> that's because of me talking about the Princess and the Frog. <laughs> I should use as the thumbnail the Princess and the Frog. The <laughs> I don't know. I'll figure it out in like a year. Okay. Anyhow, look forward to the next episode, everyone. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.